Hello, Performance Ninja. I hope you had a fun time working on this loop interchange lab assignment. Congratulations if you are able to achieve the required speed up. And if you just want to see the solution, continue watching this video. As I said in the previous video, this lab is quite simple. So without further ado, let's check out the solution. If you profile the code, it will immediately point you to the innermost loop in the multiply function. Let's examine the memory access pattern for this loop. Okay, so this loop over k is actually a dot product operation where we accumulate the sum of um, products of elements on a row in matrix A and a column in matrix B and put it into a result matrix. And this result sub i sub j is actually a loop invariant here because there is no k index here. And a sub i sub k also performs sequential accesses. But b sub k sub j performs the strided accesses and that's the problem. And since the loops in this loop nest are perfectly nested, we can interchange them without breaking the semantics of the code. And the solution would be to simply swap the loops for j and k. That's it. Examining the memory access patterns again, we can see that result sub i sub j now performs sequential memory accesses. a sub i sub k actually becomes a loop invariant here. And b sub k sub j also now does sequential memory accesses. Now let's build the executable and benchmark it against the baseline. So my baseline measurement is on the left and my improved version is on the right. And we can see that the execution time decreased from 766 milliseconds per iteration down to just 116 milliseconds per iteration, which is more than six times speed up. And top-down analysis also shows a reduction in memory bound metric by almost 8% from almost 30% down to just 22%. I also recollected the data with Intel advisor tool on a modified binary and this is what it shows us. Arithmetic intensity of the loop didn't change much which is expected since we didn't introduce any changes to the algorithm itself. So our dot didn't move either left or right on the x axis. But the number of flops increased significantly from 1.7 gigaflops up to 19 gigaflops, which moved our dot up on the y axis. But as you can see, even with this change, we still don't hit the roof. So there is some more performance to be gained to reach a single precision floating point peak performance and get to the level of the L1 cache bandwidth. But you can have it as an extra exercise. All right, this is it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and I see you in the next lab assignment.